Have a look at these two beetles. The blue one is moving smoothly, while the orange one is jumping every now and then. What makes the orange one's movement different from the blue ones? I mean, obviously the orange one is jumping and the blue one isn't, but why does that make it different? What exactly does it mean when we say that the orange one jumps and the blue one doesn't? If we plot their movements on a graph, the blue beetle makes a single unbroken curve, and the orange beetle makes a curve with separate pieces. Let's take a closer look at one of the places where the orange curve breaks. If we call this point in time t, and we focus on a small interval of time around t, notice that the blue beetle moves a fairly small distance over this time period, while the distance covered by the orange one still includes the jump. If we want to keep the blue beetle within a certain distance of its position at time t, we only have to look at points in time close enough to t. In other words, any point in time close enough to t will guarantee that the blue beetle is close to its position at time t. If we want it to be super close, we only have to ensure that the time is close enough to t, even if the time has to be very, very close to t. We can try the same thing with the orange beetle, and if we don't need it to be too close to its position at time t, then any time point close enough to t will work. But, as we make the desired interval smaller, eventually we reach a point where just looking at times close enough to t does not guarantee that the orange beetle is close to its position at time t. We can keep the beetle close enough by looking at times just before t, but any time point after t, no matter how close to t, gets the beetle outside the area that we want it to be in. It's not enough to require the time to just be close enough to t. So, in the case of the orange beetle, closeness in position cannot be obtained purely from closeness in time. To put it more abstractly, arbitrary closeness in the output cannot be obtained purely from sufficient closeness in the input. In the case of the blue beetle, arbitrary closeness in position can always be obtained from sufficient closeness in time. This is how continuity is defined rigorously in mathematics. A function is continuous at a point if arbitrary closeness of the output can be obtained from sufficient closeness of the input. That is, a function f is continuous at a point c if the value of f can be made arbitrarily close to its value at c by making the input sufficiently close to c. Exactly how close to c the input needs to be in order to guarantee that f is close to its value at c will depend on a bunch of things like what the function f is, what the value of c is, and how close we want f to be to its value at c. So, to recap, f is continuous at c means that if r is any positive number, we can guarantee that the distance between f of x and f of c is less than r purely by ensuring that the distance between x and c is less than some number, say s. For different values of r, we may end up with different values of s, but what matters is that no matter what value we choose for r, as long as it is positive, there is some s such that whenever the distance from x to c is less than s, we are guaranteed that the distance from f of x to f of c is less than r. Let's look a little deeper into this idea. As it stands, the definition relies on the absolute value of the difference between two numbers, which we use as our definition of the distance between them. The definition would not make sense if we didn't already know what it means to subtract two numbers and to take the absolute value of the result. But are the ideas of subtraction and absolute value really essential to the idea behind the definition? Well, not really, we only use them because we need them in order to define the distance between two numbers. 
Don't you think that it would make the point of the definition more obvious if, instead of the absolute value of the difference of x and c, we just said d of x c and bundled up the definition of the distance between two numbers into d. Now, if we actually need to calculate the distance between x and c, we can expand the definition of d as needed. But don't you think that this way of writing it makes it more clear what the idea is behind the definition? Don't you think that this is more in line with what the definition is actually supposed to capture? It might seem like a small change, but removing the unnecessary detail in the definition actually allows us to apply our definition in many other contexts. Now that the definition only refers to distance, we can say that whenever we have some way of determining the distance between two things, we can also talk about a function being continuous. We no longer need to be able to subtract or take the absolute value. All we need is some notion of distance. In mathematics, if we are studying some kind of set, it doesn't take much to define the distance between two elements of that set. All we need is a function which takes two elements of that set and outputs a number, subject to a very short list of requirements. For example, the distance between two things is always either positive or zero, and the distance from something to itself is always zero. Now that our definition is phrased in terms of a general distance function, we can apply it to any set which has a notion of distance defined on it. See how this generalizes the definition we had before? Believe it or not, we can actually take the generalization one step further. I'll skip over a lot of the detail involved in that, but the basic idea is this. Where we say the distance between x and c is less than s, we can instead say x is in the set of all points whose distance from c is less than s. And where we say the distance between f of x and f of c is less than r, we can instead say f of x is in the set of all points whose distance from f of c is less than r. Then, the notion of the set of all points whose distance from some particular point is less than some number is condensed even further and is replaced by an even more abstract idea, the so-called open set. This leads us to the field of topology, where the definition of an open set captures the idea of a set of points which is close to some particular point without making any mention of a notion of distance. The fact that the act of generalizing the notion of distance and continuity led us all the way to the field of topology just goes to show how useful it can be to strip away the unnecessary detail to reveal the core idea behind some concept. It's one of the things I love about mathematics, and I hope I've managed to convey at least why someone might be interested in this. Thanks for watching.